The older you get, the faster time flies. In grade school, the days may seem endless. In junior high, they go a little faster. And in high school, the tempo picks up even more, with sports and driving and dating. But it's not until the first year of college that the pace of life hits its frenzied peak. That first year is a big step on the way from boyhood to manhood. Every student and every campus is different. Yet they're enough alike so that what happens on one campus can show some of what's happening on most campuses and can provide an important look during a time when the public's view of the university is often as confused as a new freshman's first impression. This is the story of Richard Bain Smith, a bright young man from San Diego, California. But it's also the story of every college freshman. It was filmed at the University of California, Riverside, but it's the story of changes taking place at every college. It's about the relationships between faculty and students, the use of beer and barbiturates, the search for a new pattern, change on campus, and change in an individual. It's a look at a demanding, full-time job, the occupation of student. Well, the first day I got here, you were supposed to come about 3. I got here about 11 o'clock in the morning. And I walked around, just all around the campus. I'd never been here before. So I just took myself on a complete tour, you know, and so I really, you know, I was really looking around and, you know, Exploring, seeing what was around. The first few weeks are lonely and hard, and maybe that's good, because there's plenty to learn. Who hands out meal tickets? What the professors want? How to find your way in the bookstore? come to this place and you realize, well, mm, I don't know anybody. There was one girl from my high school who goes here, and I didn't even know her. You don't feel at ease, really. You know, I would go out because I didn't feel like sitting around a room doing nothing. Billy. Or John, or something of this sort. In class, Richard finds himself with some of the brightest students in the state, and the teachers expect them to perform. At Mamie's Thanksgiving turkey dinner, something of this sort. Boy, math is a lot tougher than it was in high school, so there's a lot more studying for that. You don't go home and do your homework in maybe five, ten minutes anymore. When you have an integration problem, you work and you work and you work. If classwork were the only pressure on them, students like Richard would breeze through college like fire through an old Christmas tree. But there are other pressures. Away from home, often for the first time, freshmen have to make decisions about classes and actions that may affect their entire lives. There's just nobody that's going to tell you how to live your life anymore. And, you know, you depend on yourself a lot more. You learn a lot you wouldn't learn any other way. And uh, there's the whole thing about uh, drugs and liquor and all that. You just learn to make your own decisions. I think that's the whole thing about college. Everything kind of relates to that. I know where I want to go. Like, I want to be a business administration major, definitely. I hope to go to law school and minor in computer sciences. That's what he wants now, when he's not worried about boosting grades or booting footballs.
school that Richard chose is not a party school. It has a high scholastic rating, and over half of its graduates plan to go on toward advanced degrees. But 6,000 healthy young men and women don't live just for their studies. Students today are aware of what's happening, and they want to be a part of it, no matter what. This is Donna St. Amand, one of Richard's friends. I want to experience a lot of different things, and I don't know, just do everything different, and then I'm, I'm finding out what I like in life, you know, and exactly, I don't really care, people don't matter that much, you know, sure I want them to like me, anything, but it doesn't matter anymore so much what they feel, because I feel that everything's going to be changing eventually. Mm -hmm. You want to get married? I want to get married. <laughs> I don't know, I thought I wanted a career when I first came here. What do you think about taking this one to That was Curly. At first I was going to be a doctor. You? Mm-hmm, then I was going to be a math that. major. Yeah, I was a doctor until... I started filling out the applications, and it was a lot easier to put down math. Richard's experience with adult activities was pretty limited when he was home. And now that he's on his own, he's beginning to learn, sometimes the hard way, that too much partying can mean grief in the morning. Still, when there's work to do, you've got to get up, no matter how you feel. Richard is doing well in a computer course this quarter. The computer has become such an important part of civilization that the graduate who doesn't know how it works and what it can do will soon be as out of date as an engineer without a slide rule. Students here use a computer in many regular courses. They write and punch cards for their own programs. And if they've asked the right questions in just the right way, they sometimes get useful answers from the machine. Richard's success with a computer doesn't help in calculus. He's still having trouble. That could mean real trouble if professors are concentrating on research and publications and don't have time left for students. But Richard is lucky. The major emphasis here, as at many schools, is still on teaching, and professors schedule time to work with students individually. After Richard pulled a D in one math quiz and flunked another, he asked for help from his professor. Now, the volume would be what, in terms of the various dimensions? It would be this outer part minus the inner part. OK, fine. We're going to have the volume of the entire disk minus the That conference cleared up some key points and helped Richard recover enough to pass the course with a C. No one gets athletic scholarships at this school. That kind of scholarship is going out of style at many schools. So its teams will probably never make the big time. But it hosts a major tournament every year and does have a pretty fair swim squad. The sports that really attract support, though, are the ones in which a majority of students can participate. campus is located an hour from the beach, an hour from a major music center, about 50 miles from a desert resort, and not far from fairly good mountain skiing. In his first year here, Richard wants to try it all, which he won't be able to do. And he won't make the ski team either, but at least he keeps trying.
Like most college towns, Riverside has no Sunset Strip or Times Square. So most of the entertainment takes place right on campus. Some of it has drawn praise from critics. Listen to the gramophone record. <laughs> well, let's think. Oh, where are you going? Uh, are you going out? To find the YW? Well, I'll come too. What? I'll come as well. Where? To find it. What? The YW. Richard even tries medieval music. He's polite, but he still prefers the sounds of his own times. The exciting thing about a university is that there's always so much going on. Everyone is concerned with his own things, and yet, somehow, most are seeking similar goals. Knowledge, the ability to think clearly and critically, and a workable, developing philosophy of life. A good university doesn't just confirm conventional knowledge. It opens up minds to new and better ideas. So it should be expected that bright students questioning old established ideas in math and science, will ask some penetrating questions about society, too. These questions have taken the form of loudly voiced student dissatisfaction about some courses and policies. These arguments often produce changes in the way things are done, because at this school, there is a tradition of loudly airing and listening to opinions on every side of almost every question. This is Philip Luce, an outspoken conservative. They kept espousing a very strong left-wing position, and they were never censored. Invited speakers at the regular Wednesday noon convocations are selected by a joint student-faculty committee. The opinion of the speakers ranges all the way from the conservative Luce, through Charles Evers, to Timothy Leary, the popularizer of LSD and other so-called mind-expanding drugs. There are still a lot of people around who are feeling uptight. I submit to you that the hedonic gap is the only conflict in human life. Many in the opening from speakers such as Timothy Leary proposes potentially disastrous action to bearded, blue jean garbed students. But these college men and women don't believe everything they hear. They know the dangers as well as the supposed benefits of drugs. No, he, he turned it around and played word games with us, the guy that answered them. I mean, he turned it, the question around so that everybody laughed, and he never really answered the question. But you can screw up your life. Well, At a bull session in Richard's room following Leary's talk, the subject also turns to the problems of black power and violence in the nation. Like, a lot of guys uh, have never been in the ghetto and they don't know what violence, real brute violence is. Like many schools, UC Riverside has been recruiting black and Mexican-American students for several years. The idea is to make the number of blacks and Chicanos in the student body more representative of the general population. An active black students union here persuaded the administration to help publish a black literary magazine. Black students were elected homecoming queen and student body president, but they are far from satisfied. What we're asking for now is the Black Studies Department. Most black people, and specific black people, are going on notions that have been handed down to them by white people who didn't really understand what they were studying about or looking at. And so oh, Chancellor uh, Ivan Hinderocker discussed the ethnic studies program with other administrators. Uh, I, I think that we should have been at this a long time ago. Uh, I think that uh, every campus where this has not blown up is living on borrowed time. After long and sometimes heated discussions, well the faculty and administration created both a Black Studies Department and Mexican American Studies program. One way to ensure that the school responds to the needs of all the students is to appoint members of all groups to responsible jobs. Arthur Martinez, for example, 
is in charge of special programs. Booker Williams is director of financial aids. Richard doesn't care whether Mr. Williams is black or white. He wants to know whether he'll get a short-term loan or not. And he's worried about how he'll fare in the difficult courses of this last quarter of the freshman year. There are other things to consider besides flasks and forensics and formaldehyde. It's springtime. Spring is a cruel time at college. The smell of new-mown grass and the warm breezes are relaxing. Flowers are blooming, and there's an almost overpowering desire to do nothing. Yet it's in springtime that the whole year rushes to conclusion. Richard is still troubled about his grades, his girlfriend, graph status, and plans for next year. His goals are changing, too. He now thinks he may go to a theological seminary when he graduates, but he's not at all sure. And the fact that he is still undecided is not necessarily bad, because the purpose of the university is to arouse interest and help put new ideas into play. And that is just what has happened. Richard Bain Smith has changed since last September. He's more confident, he understands the world a little more, and he is beginning to see where he fits in. And Richard, whose occupation for at least another three years will be that of student, is beginning to see what the job is all about. Mm -hmm.